This L cast is recorded in front of a live streaming audience. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. Joining me today is a man who's just powering up his wolf fang fist. Welcome, Jacob. Why, thank you. Let me introduce our co-host, a man simply who, uh, he's missing one, he's missing one Dragon Ball to complete a wish he's always wanted his entire life. Now, I don't know what that wish is, but it's going to sound like interesting or something weird. Welcome, Drew. I so want to play a riff on what Bulma and Yamcha's wish was. Oh my gosh. Fun fact, that's the same wish they had in the first story arc of Dragon Ball. Oh my gosh. But I am not going there. Yes, no. Yeah, today we are reviewing the very first Dragon Ball movie, Mm -hmm. Curse of the Blood Rubies. A very, very (laughs) interesting adaptation of the first story arc of Dragon Ball. Yes. Not Z. No. Not Dragon Ball Super. Nor not GT. Nor, thank goodness it's not GT. GT wasn't <laughs> Anyway, and of course, it's not Dragon Ball Z Kai. No. Or any, and, and you know, it's also not. Uh, no. It's not that one. Please, no. That belongs in Bad Movie Month. Yeah, burn it. But burn no, it this is it. the original Dragon Ball. This is like literally one year after the anime started. Mm-hmm. Two years after the manga came out is when this came out. And Funimation did not get to make an uncut audio version of this until 2010. <laughs> we'll get in more into that later. This was made in 1986. Yeah, about. Well, let's go ahead and uh, just jump into that spoiler free stuff. Certified fresh and spoiler free. This is my second viewing. Ah, because I the entire reason I bought this four disc box set, besides collection reasons, mm-hmm. was because I read on like I don't remember where I was reading it, but it said, "Oh yeah, this is the first time this has come out uncut. It's a classic gem of the Dragon Ball franchise, and this is the only way you're going to get it." So I went and bought it when it became available, and I watched it, and I thought, said, "This is the same story but modified as the beginning of Dragon Ball." That doesn't make it bad. True. It's just not what I would have considered an uncut gem. <laughs> Fair. But uh, it's a goofy little fun movie. It, it's only got like a couple of weird little issues here and there, in my opinion. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, well, Jacob, this is your first time not only yes. seeing this film, but anything pre-Z. Uh, well, that's more of a misnomer. Be like, I've I've oh, seen look, tr- I'm, true. You have watched the Dead Zone because we reviewed that. I've watched the Dead Zone, and that is technically pre Z. Mm-hmm. I've seen. A, I think I saw like the first episode of Dragon Ball years ah. ago, and I was like, oh, okay, but this isn't Dragon Ball Z. It's not as fun. It's not as like it didn't have the, all the like the big fights in the whole bit. What I was used to with Dragon Ball Z. It takes a little bit getting there. Yeah, and I, I can see I can see why it didn't take off so well here in the states. Why they jump straight to Z. Exactly. Exactly. But overall, I enjoyed this film for what it was. Uh, they are getting, I'll get into my likes and dislikes, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. But overall, I thoroughly, I, I want to say thoroughly enjoyed it. It was an interesting little ride, and it, it made me chuckle. All right. And it was like, uh, this scene happened. Why can't we get this scene again in like Dragon Ball Z or Super or whatever? Because that would be funny. <laughs> the writing style changed over the just, years. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> it went from being mostly a comedy mm-hmm. to being mostly action. Yeah. It never really. It, it's action comedy all the way through it. But the focus on what on on what we're looking at changes mm-hmm. over the course of the time. Yeah. I just I I love one particular scene which I did not see coming. It's between a fight between two characters for the first oh, time. I know which one you're talking about. It just it was like what? Our you weren't man, expecting? I was not expecting that. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing because you've never seen this character get their tail 
kicked this hard. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that because yes. that, that is going to come up as that, that's going to come up later. I, yeah. I'll tell you that right now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the, I will give a fair warning. <laughs> Despite the fact that you're going to be thinking, oh, it's Dragon Ball, it's Dragon Ball Z kind Mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Obviously, this was made for kids in Japan. So it should be good for kids here because we watched it on Toonami back in the day. Right. Toonami cleaned it up a lot. Just just a little. A little. This is uncut. Yeah, it is very uncut. And... Uh, everything you've Roshi. heard about Master Roshi is true. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, it's and it's at its worst, both in this movie and in the and the beginning of Dragon Ball. Over time, as it moves away from the more comedic aspects, mm-hmm. and we get to know the character better, while his perversion never leaves, it's it becomes gold, less uh, gold in down. your face a little bit. But anyway, yeah, Roshi. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the spoiler-filled section. Yes, let's get into it. The following is a spoiler-filled review for the movie Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rubies. Listener discretion is advised. Dragon Ball Curse of the Blood Rubies was directed by Daisuke Nishio, who directed 93 episodes of Dragon Ball Z. Hmm. Mostly during the end of the Frieza arc and the beginning of the Cell arc. Okay. Just to give you an idea. It was written by Toshiki Inoue. And if I mispronounce that name, I apologize. In fact, anytime I ever mention a Japanese name tonight, and if I mispronounce it, I apologize. Welcome the, to my world. The English script, which was the 20, specifically the 2010 dub of mm. the film, was written by Sean Teague. Mm. And of course... It is based on the characters and manga Dragon Ball Mm -hmm. by Akira Toriyama. Yes. Copyright Bird Studios, copyright Funimation. Following as a fan. No, that's I'm not going into (laughs) Dragon Ball Z abridged. Yes. I was like, I was like, I was trying to get, I was trying to get in my mind. How do they say it? Following as a fan based parody, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT are owned by Funimation, Toy Animation, Mm -hmm. Fuji TV, and Akira Toriyama. And then later on, they included Shueisha and uh, and, uh, somebody else. I don't remember. And moving on. Mm. The cast. <laughs> yes, going into the cast. We've got Colleen Clinkenbeard as Goku. Okay. Because this is not the Goku we're used to seeing. No. This is his original form as Pine a kid. Form. Pine says Goku. Uh, and Goku. he played another famous Goku-esque character in another anime, that series, that has yet to finish despite the fact that we can remember seeing it on, uh, new episodes of it coming out in high school okay. on a certain channel by a certain company that edited some other animes that we've actually reviewed mm. that is famous for its original theme song for the show being a rap song. Oh. Hmm. Are we talking uh, Four Kids? Four Kids is the company. Okay. But what did they dub? That is fit has been the sh- they're no longer doing the dub. Obviously, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone to Funimation now. Yeah. Crunchyroll. Yeah. Um. When it was on Four Kids and it played on Fox Television. Yeah, I think, back in the day. Yeah. Its theme song that they wrote for it was a rap song. Yeah, you a yeah. infamous rap song. Uh, no, I was a uh, oh. One Piece. Yes. One Piece. That's right. He is Monkey D. She she plays Monkey D. Luffy, the head main character of One Piece. Oh, okay. So you know it's, she's pretty good at voicing Goku's. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, because to quote Dragon Ball, Pine Size Goku, a pirate Goku. Oh, pirate. Oh yeah. As opposed, oh my, oh my as God. opposed to Ninja Goku. A bridge. You gotta love it. <laughs> Sword Guy Piccolo. Moving on. Monica Rial voiced Bulma, yep. and in the anime Doctor Stone, she voiced Chalk, a one of the other characters, one of the yeah. girls in there. Yeah, Brian Massey was the voice of Oolong, and in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, he played Isaac McDougal. Okay, Brianna Palencia was the voice of Poir, and in the Evangelion Rebuild movie, she played Ray. Oh, okay. 
Did she originally play Ray or is not in the uh That's right, that's right. Not, not in the ADV dub. Okay. In fact, I don't think Funimation pulled any of the original actors for the rebuild movies, but I could be I, wrong did, there. Actually, they, they, I could, like I said, I could be wrong there. We'll yeah. talk more about that at the end of the year. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I will say Stay I don't know, mm-hmm. but I know Rihanna Palencia was one of Funimation's newer actresses at that's this time. That's right. That's right. Because I remember they were, they had to replace the actors who played Ray. They, yeah. And she placed a lot of the Dragon Balls because uh, Poir, this is not the original voice of Poir either. Mm. This is one of her first times voicing Poir. Oh, okay. Christopher R. Sabat was the voice of both Yamcha and Shenron. That's what I thought. I was like, what? what is... He's the only voice actor that's the same that you're used to hearing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. What does this sound like, Vegeta? Because <laughs> it kind of is. Um, <laughs> and, of course, he played All Might in My Hero Academia. And Vegeta, of course. Yes, and Vegeta, and... He was like half the Ginyu Force, and <laughs> in the original Dragon Ball Z dub, Chris Chris Sabat played like half the cast. Yeah, it's Chris Sabat. That's what he, he does. He was, I think, he just hung out in the studio and says, "Oh, I can voice that." Mm-hmm. It's, but that's a female character, Chris Sabat. I don't care. I can voice it. <laughs> I think I'm guessing Mike McFarland was the voice of Master Roshi. And he played Goemon Ishikawa the 13th in Lupin the Third, Dragon of Doom, plus a few other Lupin the Third films. Hmm. Kate Oxley was the voice of Pasta. That was the female. Villain. Oh, okay. I was like, who's Pasta? <laughs> the female villain. Yes, that's, that's the thing you have to remember about Dragon Ball names. They're all puns. Yes. And apparently, this guy's was all food based of some kind mm. but he played pot she played pasta and in the uh one of my favorite uh slice of life animes school rumble she played the character of mai Charmy lee was the voice of pansy the redhead girl that yeah running around with them and she played uh tenma in school rumble mm. jonathan brooks was the voice of bongo that was the male uh villain guy yeah. and uh in one piece he played a character named foxy hmm. jeremy inman the voice of king gurumas the only thing i found that really stood out to me was he was android 16 in dragon ball z huh last but not least john swayze was the voice of the narrator at the very beginning yeah and in the evangelion rebuild films of course he played gendo ikari Oh, oh! I can, I can hear that now. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Hear that now. Getting into Kingdom Hearts connections. Ooh. Yes. Let's see. This was a two that the 2010 dub, right? Yes. Okay. But so, bear in mind, for mm. Kingdom Hearts connections, I don't just pull from the dub we watched. Okay. I also pulled from the other three English dubs plus the oh, original Japanese version. You and that does bud. and that doesn't well that's actually it's easy, really easy to do that okay, instead of trying fair, to, fair. To, to narrow it to one dub. Mm. So but with that in mind, and I will tell you that really doesn't help you with the number that much. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I, I just keep thinking the Chris Sabbath dub I'd be like voice anything in Kingdom Hearts. I'll be nice. No. Okay. So I, I would probably be like a good fair estimate, probably five. You're close. It's actually four. Oh. And none of them are the English voice actors. Oh, okay. it's all the Japanese. Oh, okay. Makoto, sorry, Masako Nozawa, who voices, who's the original voice of Goku and is still the Japanese voice of Goku to this day. Really? Yes. And pretty much all of the rest of Goku's family. If, except for Raditz. Well, I thought she'd recently passed away. No, she's still alive. Oh, okay. It was a uh, Bulma's actress who re- passed away in the last Bulma. couple of years. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. But uh, you know. in King- in Kingdom Hearts, she plays Meriwether, one of the fairies from Sleeping Beauty. Oh, okay. Hmm. Naoki Tatsuda was the voice of Oolong, and he plays Rabbit and the small beagle boy in Kingdom Hearts. Hmm. Shozo Izuka, who played Pansy's father, is the voice of Dr. Jumba Jukiba in Kingdom Hearts. And Shuchiro Moriyama, who plays King Gurumas in the Japanese version, Mm -hmm. is both Flotsam and Jetsam in Kingdom Hearts. (laughs) 
there. So that's what I've got for um, cast lists and direct connections and such. Uh, did you find anything for info and stuff? Yes, I did. Because I know, I know how sometimes the anime gives you trouble. Yes. It gives me trouble sometimes. Yeah, this, this wasn't very hard to find. All right, so IMDb on, oh, correction, for info and stuff. Uh, on IMDb, it has a 6.7 out of 10. And for fun fact, uh, so while Drew was rattling off information, I looked at my list, and for IMD- IMDb, I did not list anything. So I had to go back and quickly fill that out. So oh, fun. Yeah, there you go. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Exactly. So watching, you can right now watch it on Funimation if you're subscribed to Funimation. Or Crunchyroll. Or Crunchyroll. But if Probably you want to, if you places. want to rent the if you want to rent the film, you can go to Apple TV or like if you're subscribed to Apple TV, you can rent it there for three ninety nine. Ah, only place you can rent it. It's a weird location. It is weird. I'm now wondering which version of it is they've got. Hmm. I might have to look at that. We'll get into that in a minute. All right. So production was Toei Animation, distributed by Toei Production. Its original release date was December 20th, 1982 in Japan. Uh, 82 or 86? 86. I mean, 86. I'm sorry. My mistake. Read the, read the script say, wrong. Came so, out before Dragon Ball. Gotcha. Yes. The yes. manga. It came out way before Dragon Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This came, out, this came out years before Dragon Ball. This is an original yeah. movie that okay, Toriyama just ripped off. Akira Toriyama ripped this off. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you could have done better. I could have done you keep saying that. I'll, I've, I've never. I don't watched... hate this film, by the oh, way. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, there's um, just a few sticking points we'll get to. Yes. Uh, box office at the Japanese box office. Uh, the film sold 2.4 2.4 million tickets and earned a net domestic rental income of 800 million yen. Convert that into five million. Uh, its worldwide gross was seven point four million dollars. Hmm. Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad for a Japanese movie. Yeah, that came out in nineteen eighty six. That pro- that definitely did not get a U.S. release at the time. No, because what I understand how Dragon Ball came. Well, we'll get to that. Was, was here. Yeah, we will get to that. Okay. So home release. Uh, this is interesting. Our, how this movie has you know went from oh, yeah. one place to another to another to another and to another. So we'll get into that in a second. As stated, there were four dubs. There's four dubs of this film. Four of it. All right. So Curse of the Blood Ruby, originally titled Dragon Ball, the movie, later later, uh, later retitled Dragon Ball, The Legend of Shinron, was originally cool. like... Uh, before you go on, this is not a correction. Okay. But did it call it The Legend of Shinron or The Legend of Shenlong? Shinron. Okay. That's a slight English adaptation of what they actually called it oh, okay because the character's name because shenron's name in japanese is shenlong okay fair so i just wanted to put that out there that, now you know and knowing it's half the battle <laughs> it's apparently summing dragons now <laughs> <laughs> all right so where was i uh licensed by harmony gold usa the same guys who did robotech way back in the yes. day am i right you're right okay Good. I was just remembering stuff I've looked up about that dub. Mm. <laughs> uh, who, who dubbed and released the film in uh, conjunction with Mystical Adventure, simply titled Dragon Ball. The dub aired on December 28th, 1989, as a special on television on WPGST in Philly 52 and Philadelphia, and Philadelphia Pennsylvania in the United here in the United States. Uh, it was edited for content. Most, Ooh, of the, yeah. uh, most of the characters' names were renamed. We'll get to that. Uh, second, <laughs> the second English dub of Curse of the Blood Ruby was produced by Funimation as a mm-hmm. pilot to sell Dragon Ball uh, series t- for American syndication. was originally premiered on syndication on September 9th, 1995, along with the first episode of Emperor Pilaf Saga, mm-hmm. uh, Secret of the Dragon Balls was released on VHS in North America by Trimark mm-hmm. on December 26th to December 24th, 1996. Another dub of the film was produced for European markets by AB Group and dubbed in France and aired in the UK as Legend of Shinron 
on Toonami UK in the summer of 2005. It was released on DVD as an alternate English track. In some European releases, it is likely that the cast used the this version uh, of the speaking of the English speak English speaking voice actors in Paris in two thousand in uh, in Paris, France. On August 6, 2010, Funimation announced that Curse of the of the Blood Ruby would be released uh, to the Balkan DVD. Balkan, uh, I'm going to butcher the name. On um, BIL bilingual bilingual. Thank you. Reading disorders are a pain in the butt, people. Yes, uh, bilingual. Thank you, Drew. Uh, bilingual DVD on January 27th, 2010, but the release was delayed until December 28th, 2010. Funimation announced the, the voice cast for the new English dub of the film on December 12th, 2010. The, 2000, the 2010 English dub, mostly unedited, only the only visual edit being the title and credit sequences. Mm -hmm. But the script was mostly recycled from the 1995 English dub, which itself was based on the 1989 dub script, with most of the notable change being all the character names reversed to their original names. The audio was recorded in Dallas, Texas. However, very, very few voice actors from Funimation English dub from yeah, from, from the original Dragon Ball dub. Yeah, from the original uh, reprisal role for this film, with their replacements for the dub for re replacements from the dub of Dragon Ball Z GT. The production pr in production at that time. You, uh, was it GT or was it Kai? No, Kai. It's what I meant to say. Kai. There's so many Dragon Ball yeah. series. I'm <laughs> funny. It's what, I'm not correcting you to, to, to lord my knowledge over you. I'm, I'm wanting to make sure you actually get the right names yes, out. Yes. Because yes. I don't. Because I, I recognize there's a lot, and your reading disorder does not help. No, it does with all. But I'm actually doing fairly. You well. You are doing you very well. I'm Thank just, you. I'm just listening and helping. I retreat. Helping. For that. To, I don't have any for you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Darn. You, you had all the bacon last night. Uh, that's true. All right. Uh, being. Uh, let me go back to where the first sentence. Uh, with their replacements from the dub of Dragon Ball Z Kai in production at this at that time being used instead. The film contain, uh, contained the 2010 dub was later re-released in the Dragon Ball movie four pack, which I would assume this is the one you got. Yes. That was released on February 8th, 2018, 2011. Sequels. Is there a sequel to this film? There is. Okay. And if you'll do me a favor and pick that box up off the floor, ah. I will tell you what the sequels are. Ah. There you go. Thank you. The other movies that came out after this was Dragon Ball, Sleeping Princess and Dragon Devil's Castle, and Mystical Adventure, which came out within like a year of each other. Okay. Along with this film. And then the last one, The Path to Power. Uh, came out like right before Dragon Ball, uh, right after Dragon Ball Z finished. Ah, there's plus. Let's see, six Dragon Ball Z films. Yeah, no, there's more than that because you got uh, Dead Zone, you got Tree of Might, mm -hmm. you got uh, World Strongest, mm -hmm. you got the Broly trilogy. Mm -hmm. I'm just jumping ahead to get a couple of these out of there. Super Android 13. Bojack Unbound, and these are all the English names, by the way, not the original Japanese names, mm -hmm. <laughs> plus, like, two specials, mm -hmm. plus Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods, Dragon Ball Z Resur Resurrection F, Dragon Ball Super uh, Broly, mm -hmm. and Dragon Ball Super Superhero, plus you got the actual uh, animes that were coming around at the same time, Dragon yeah. Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Z Kai, Dragon Ball Super. And GT. And then Super Dragon Ball, which is another thing. I did leave that GT. I didn't you intend. Did that time, you, I did not intend to. Yeah, you have a tendency of wanting to leave that out. Um, <laughs> that is, I did leave that out. Because not only was there a G, the GT series, there was a GT movie. Yes, there was. That a I don't know the name of. <laughs> it's over there somewhere. But I don't know the name of it. <laughs> of course you can have the movie. Because I, 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 I bought that series and never watched it. 
<laughs> to complete the collection. <laughs> I I did not say we wouldn't. It's okay. just in my mind, it's uh, no guarantee because we've already actually broke this because we started with the dead zone. Yeah, a couple years back. Yeah, I actually thought yeah, this would back be, and listen to that. it would be fun for us to go through all the Dragon Ball film, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and Dragon Ball Kai films. Yeah, all of them, kind of in the order they came out. Ah, uh, okay. We'll just have the one that's out of order, kind of like we do with the Muppet films. Yeah, but we need to get back to that. Yes, we do. Go watch the or listen to the the. Uh, Anywho, what we did for those, and then we are actually talking about taking watching a fan production of Dragon Ball, another one, certain uh, shorter version. I don't know what that was. <laughs> a bridge. Oh, abridged. I get it now because it was a bridge. Cute. <laughs> I can't be every once in a while. <laughs> uh, there's a Z, there's a Dragon Ball Z abridged quote that I'm not going to make because you, you missed it. When I said cute, you said I'm adorable. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> is that all your info and stuff? Yes, that's all of your like. You probably have a ton of information, but that's all I've got. Well, let's hit the summary. The soldiers of King Guramas are destroying the homes and lands of farmers within his kingdom to look for the blood rubies. Uh, in the Japanese version, these were called Richie Sutan or Rich Stones. Oh, okay. spelled R I T C H. Hmm. So it's actually a name, not rich, but it's okay. a pun on rich. I got you. Anyway, his two main enforcers are Pasta and Bongo, whom he has tasked with finding the Dragon Balls. Since finding the Blood Rubies, Gurumes has fallen under a curse that turned him into a large purple monster and makes his hunger insatiable. He hopes to wish the curse away with the Dragon Balls. A rebellious little girl named Pansy, after her, uh, Pansy, after her father gets a brutal beating by Bongo in defending her, decides to go and find help. Goku, a young monkey-tailed boy with special strength, is living alone in the wilderness of Mount Paozu. When he is catching a giant, while he's catching a giant fish, a blue-haired teenage girl named Bulma, who is also searching for the Dragon Balls with the help of a device called a Dragon Radar, runs into Goku. Thinking Bulma is a monster, Goku prepares to attack her, but Bulma convinces him that she is a human. After learning that Bulma is a girl, Goku tells her that, that his grandpa gave him a Dragon Ball before he died. Pasta and Bongo arrive at Goku's home and steals Dragon Ball, leaving a gold coin in its place. They flee in their fighter jet, but are defeated by Goku with his power pole. Later that night, Goku and Bulma find Pansy being accosted by a large monster named Oolong, who has the ability to shapeshift into any other form. Oolong flees when Goku proves his strength by destroying a large tree, but he chases the shapeshifter and knocking him down with the power pole, finds out that his true form is that of a pig. While snapping at the curious Goku, Oolong freaks out when he suddenly realizes that they have landed in the, in the territory of the evil ba desert bandit Yamcha. <laughs> Yamcha. Then suddenly Yamcha and his psychic Poir, Oolong's former classmate from the shapeshifting school where he was expelled for stealing the teacher's undergarments, what? attacks the duo. This was in the film. I know. <laughs> Goku battles Yamcha through weapon fighting, which later moves on to their special moves such as Yamcha's Wolf Fang Fist and Goku's uh, Jenken, aka Rock Paper Scissors moves. Oh, but their duel is cut short when Bulma arrives. Yamcha has a paralyzing fear of beautiful women. Upon seeing Bulma and chipping off his tooth after crashing down from the cliff where he and Goku are standing on to fight, he and Poir retreat. In Oolong's camp out, Pansy tells Bulma that the others, uh, that, and the others about her people's plight and how she must find the great Master Roshi the Turtle Hermit to find out to help her put a stop to King Guru Mess's cruelty. But little do the group know is that Yamcha and Puar have returned, overhearing everything about the Dragon Balls. The next day, Yamcha and Puar prepare for their trip to Master Roshi's Island or to get rid of Goku and his friends while going after the Dragon Balls for themselves. As part of this scheme, Yamcha vows that he will wish away his shyness around girls so he can either get married or have a few dates. Despite Puar's protest over the unnecessary choice of needing all the treasures of ru ruling the world, back at his palace, King Gurumets now possesses five of the Dragon Balls and ensures that the last two will go next. The team arrives at Master Roshi's Island, but Yamcha has arrived first and tricked Roshi into thinking Goku is there to steal his shell. This is so dumb a plot point and is not yeah. one of the ones they stole. Agreed. 
To find out who is telling the truth, Roshi sim- summons the Flying Nimbus Cloud, a magic cloud which only an honored bronze person can ride. After Roshi's failed attempt as a demonstration, Goku suddenly rides it. Yamcha f- flees again, vowing that he will be back. Yes, Roshi also says that he will give Bulma his Dragon Ball, but only if she shows him her assets. In order to avoid Ro- Roshi, Bulma uses Oolong to uh, to transform into her in order to trick the Turtle Hermit, and it works. But Pasta and Bongo arrive in a submarine and attack the island. One of Bulma's two Dragon Balls is stolen, and Roshi's house is destroyed. Again. <laughs> Angered by the destruction of his house, Roshi powers up and uses the Kamehameha to destroy the submarine, while Pasta and Bongo flee in an escape jet. P- uh, Pansy asks Roshi to help her defeat King Guramas, but he declines and assures Pansy that Goku and Bull will be all the help she needs. That night at King Guramas's palace, you know, I'm going to jump back because this lead left out an important plot point. Goku was able to recreate the Kamehameha just by watching it the one time. Yeah, that was funny. That's a plot point stolen from the, from the manga. But anyway, yeah. that night at King Guramas's palace, Pasta states her report about the arrival of the final Dragon Ball, much to her master's delight. The next day, the team journey to King Guramas's palace and are immediately attacked by the King's Air Force. Bulma, Oolong, and Pansy are shot down while Goku has an aerial duel with Bongo, in which the monkey-tailed fighter destroys Bongo's hovercraft. Yamcha and Poir also arrive and infiltrate the palace. When they meet up with the group, Yamcha is attacked by Pasta, who is unable to fight back because of his phobia of beautiful women, and they flee with Pasta in hot pursuit. Goku defeats Bongo by knocking him through a wall with his power pole, and they all end up in King Gurumes' throne room. Fueled by both his own curse and hunger, Gurumes grows to his gigantic size before the very eyes of the group, and after crushing Bongo flat, he attacks Goku to get the last Dragon Ball. Goku tries the Kamehameha, which he had already learned from Master Roshi, but it fails to destroy him. Bulma realizes the other six Dragon Balls are inside Gurumes' stomach, so she throws her Dragon Ball into his mouth. Shinron erupts from Gurumes' body and offers to grant one wish. Pansy wishes for her land to be peaceful and beautiful again. Shinron then removes all the blood rubies and makes the land fertile again. Gurumes is reduced to a small, bald, naked man. Yamcha and Bulma decide to date. And Goku, after returning the gold coin to pasta, heads off to Master Roshi's Island to train with the Turtle Hermit. So, really quick question. What okay. do you... Because you, you, you mentioned that uh, it's Yamcha, so- Yamcha has a fear of beautiful women. Yes. What is that fear phobia called? I don't know. There actually is... Uh, uh, Yamcha phobia. Yamcha phobia. <laughs> no, it's actually... Uh, Venus trip phobia. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. So yeah, if you're scared to death of a scared to death of beautiful women, yeah, that's you. <laughs> anyway, in terms of the dates of the original, we're into the trivia now. Ah, in terms of the dates of original Japanese publication, this is actually the first time in the entire Dragon Ball franchise where it is shown that summoning the Eternal Dragon turns the sky dark. Oh which is no small contribution to the mythos, seeing as this will be turned into a major plot point during the battle on planet Namek when Krillin deduces that the Dragon Balls had not yet been used because of that. Hmm. When Emperor Pilaf summoned the dragon in the original anime and manga, it was already night, and this movie was released in Japan a few weeks before Goku in the manga would summon Shenron to revive Bora during the uh, second uh, Dragon Ball search arc. Bora was a uh, kind of a Native American looking guy. Yeah. Uh, who lived at the base of. Uh, what is the name of that of the cat? Because um, now all I can think of is another name and that's not his <laughs> real name. Corin. Corin. Yeah. yeah. He lives at the base of Corin's tower. Oh, OK. And that's how Goku learns about Corin and the sh- Senzu beans and all that later uh, on. I got but uh, the Red Ribbon Army killed um uh, Bora, and, and this would be right after, right before Goku would summon him, in, summon Shinron to revive him, before uh, near the end of the second arc. Gotcha. It has never been confirmed whether Akira Toriyama suggested that th- this to the movie producers, whether Toriyama was inspired by the movie to include this in the main continuity, or if Toriyama already had this planned and it was a freak coincidence that the movie also had the same idea. This movie was used as the basis for the live-action Chinese knockoff film, Dragon Ball The Magic Begins. There's a knockoff of this? China has a knockoff bootleg of this film. Really? And it's live-action. Oh, too funny. And my understanding is, it's better than Evolution. (laughs) 
I have not seen it, so I can't say. That, that's a lot to be said. <laughs> yeah. The 2010 English dub of this film marked the first time Colleen Clinkenbeard voiced Goku in a full-time speaking role, replacing Stephanie Nadalny, who voiced uh, Kid Goku in flashback scenes of ep- from episode one of Dragon Ball Z Kai. There are four English dubs of this film, as we talked about. Yes. The Harmony Gold dub from 89, the BLT slash Kidmark slash Funimation in 1995, gotcha. the AB Group dub in 2003, and the Funimation Uncut dub in 2010. These are the same dub groups who actually voiced, uh, uh, dubbed most of Dragon Ball in their entire, in, in uh, different sections throughout um, franchise history. Okay. The, uh, AB group dub is also uh, known among the fandom as the big green dub. Okay. Would you like to know why? Why? So all these had a tendency to change character names for unknown reasons. Yeah. And um, the AB group, for some reason, decided that Piccolo should have a different name. I heard about this. And named him big green. Oh, that totally makes sense now. (laughs) Explains some stuff from Dragon Ball Z Bridge too, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. <laughs> I was like, why are they calling him Big Green? Or, or little, little, little Green? green. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's... Um, but as I said, they a lot of these dubs would end up changing names from the original. Uh, the Harmony Gold dub name changes are pretty interesting. Uh, Pansy was known as Penny in the original version. Okay. Not too crazy. No. Poir was known as Squeaker. Squeaker. Okay. Yes. Makes sense. Yamcha was Zadaki. Yamcha's better. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oolong was named Mau Mau. Okay. Because in his the original character art, when he mm-hmm. was first introduced as in pig form, yeah. he was wearing a communist China uniform. Oh, that makes and sense. So he looked a lot like Mao Zedong <laughs> as a pig. That makes sense. Bulma was known as Lena. And Goku was named Zero. Hmm. And was, vo- was named Zero? Yes. Was he a ghost dog? No. But he did go to Hero. Hmm. But do you know who voiced Goku in that original dub? Who? None other than Barbara Goodson, a.k.a. Rita Repulsa. <laughs> oh, I have such a headache. <laughs> and now I need to find a... Uh, I need to no. take I need to take some no. audio from no. Rita Repulsa no. and overlay it over Goku. No, no. <laughs> it'd be funny as all out, but no. <laughs> and the thing is, it doesn't just have to be kid Goku. I could do it over adult Goku, especially <laughs> you the, know, the super lip- the super Saiyan scene. <laughs> yeah, all the lip flap. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect with the lip flaps. I ain't Team Four Star. <laughs> Anyway, that's the end of my trivia. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what is your first like for this film? My first like of this film. It is a fun little film. Be like, there again, uh, there again, had never seen this film. It was a fun little adventure uh, getting to meet these characters for the first time in their actually original form, not from the series, but this movie. The similar form. A similar form. There we go. Much better. Much similar form. And uh, it's a fun, quirky little film that you get to meet, like, most, uh, I would think most of the original cast from that show. Yeah. Okay. So. Pretty much, because, I mean, in the first arc, you start, of course, with just Goku and Bulma. Mm -hmm. Uh, Roshi and Turtle come up pretty quick. Yeah. Um, Oolong is, like, the next chapter. Yeah. Uh, Yamcha and Poir show up, like, right around that same time. Mm -hmm. And then, for the most part, that's your cast until uh, Krillin shows up. Okay. In terms of main cast. Yep. Granted, Pilaf, of Amai, and Shu, the villains of that first arc, yeah. they will continue showing up all the way to Super. Yeah. Actually, I think they were in Superhero, weren't they? They Those were characters. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just a nice little fun little adventure. Be like, it, it, it introduces characters, and yeah, I'll, I'll get that in my second like. So, what's your first like? This dub, I appreciate for feeling, well, it is uncut. It feels like it's part of the original Dragon Ball. Okay. And here's the reason I say that. This came out in 2010. Yeah. They were 
neck deep in, if not recording, Dragon Ball Z Kai at this yes, point. They were. They and, and, and Dragon Ball Z Kai is an entirely different animal than anything they really did before. Mm-hmm. You'd think it'd be similar to Dragon Ball Z, and there there are considerations, but yeah. Dragon Ball Z Kai is a much more accurate to the original manga mm-hmm. thing. It's a little more ironically serious than I think the, even the original one. A little more oomph, a little more uh, well, really aimed at teenagers. Mm-hmm. They could have easily easily uh, done this movie in the kind of the same feels dragon ball z kai and we actually got something that feels like no this is a movie from the original we did it as the original even the weird little acting choices are there the stuff that mm. you know all these actors and actresses like two of these people it's the first time they're either the first time or one of the first times they're voicing these characters that they're later go on and voice in kai and super mm-hmm. um and this is the first time they did it and they all sound like in a strange way, they replicated the amateurness of the original dub mm. in a way that I that I liked the feel of. It felt like I was watching an extension of the original show. Okay, and that's what I appreciate. They didn't try to update this. They didn't try to use the modern day dubbing sensibilities. Mm-hmm. They made this like it was dubbed in 1995, but they kept it uncut. Yeah, and I appreciate I, that. I, I, I would agree with you. Just... They even used. The original they, they could have taken the English uh, they they could use the original Japanese songs for uh, mystical adventure at the beginning and mm-hmm. whatever the name of the, the ending thing was, which are the, it's that's the same songs the anime used. Yeah, they could use those Japanese versions, but no, they went with they had to go probably dig deep in their archives to find the audio from when they dubbed Dragon Ball to use that the, those songs mm-hmm. in this. And it's like. And I don't think it worked too well with the ending theme because there's a really bad echo on her that's not in the original. Mm. But uh, I, it just felt like no, we we could have updated this. We could have made it like a far better dub in reality. Yeah. But we wanted to have let it have the same feel as the other three Dragon Ball movies and the show. Yeah. So we made something of that feel. Okay, and I appreciate that. Nice. Granted, they this this is probably the last thing they did with that original feel, mm. because Kai, uh, Kai Super, and the all the other films, they are all more of the modern Dragon Ball feel. More mm-hmm. of the yes, there's comedy, but the acting is so much better. Yeah. Uh, uh, after that, this is still like we're 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 a small company who got lucky enough to make the dub, and they actually replicated that feel very well. I know that's a weird thing to appreciate about this film, but mm-hmm. as a as a fan, it was nice from a nostalgic point of view. Yeah, to see this old method. Totally understand that, and I, I agree. Like the the dub itself is very well done, and it feels like something that would have been done in 1995 or the late eight mm-hmm. late eighties, or even and, early two uh, thousands, or the early two thousands, where it, it wasn't you know shy away from certain subjects. And because uh, our more modern audience is like, oh, no, you can't talk about that. But they talked about it because it was in the original film, which yeah. I appreciate. I mean, yeah, obviously I, they I knew this was with it, but they talked about they it. knew this. This, this wasn't going to ki- be aimed at kids. And they knew people wanted as close to the uh, original Japanese version in dubs. Yeah. Even at that time, they were wanting that. So that's why they went ahead and did the more explicit. Yeah. Let's say. Oh, my God. Choices. Yes. But that's what that's what all the people they knew were buying it would want it anyway, because. Yeah, the original show they did have to sell towards kids. This they didn't have to sell towards kids. They let it still have the kid feel, yep. but they uh, made it for the teenagers and the adults. Okay, so it felt like original Dragon Ball. Okay, fair enough. There, and I have not watched. That's my feeling. Okay, so to fo- to follow my second like, uh, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, parry this or going to give a fair warning. That there again, I have not watched all or most of Dragon Ball. I have seen Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball uh, GT, Kai, some of the movies. I've seen the super films, and I've seen a little bit, a little bit of Dragon Ball Super. Mm -hmm. So put that with a grain of salt when I say this. For my number two, it's not necessarily be like to watch this movie. You don't necessarily have to watch Dragon Ball. I agree with that. So for someone who's coming in fresh with fresh eyes and I don't have all the nostalgia for Dragon Ball, I have nostalgia for everything else. It's like, oh, okay, this is interesting. 
Yeah. This is this is again. You don't fun. have you don't have to have any pre knowledge of exactly. the show. Just, it puts it all in front yeah. of you. And I I enjoy that. I tremendously enjoy that because there. Uh, so yes, I I I enjoy the film for what it is. I enjoy that you can just watch the film. It tells you who people are, what they're doing, mm-hmm. all their motives and motivations, the whole bit. And it's not be like, oh, you need to go back and watch the original, the original show to yeah. understand anything going on now like this, because there's movies like that, and it's just it's it's nice to know that you can watch a movie, you can watch a film like dra- this movie, Dragon Ball, the first Dragon Ball movie, and you don't instantly have to like have the encyclopedia pulled up to know who these characters are. I will agree with you. That's nice to have that. I will say, and this will come up in my dislikes. Okay. I will say they could have done a better job. Okay. But we'll get to that. We'll get yeah, there when we I, get there. I would agree in some capacities, yes. My second like for this is the accuracy of artwork. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Is this in some case in some cases they are mimicking uh the artwork from the from the original show. Okay. In certain cases, because a, a lot of this like this is in some ways an alternate universe retelling of the first arc in mm. some ways. So of course some, while, while they never actually quote unquote, except for the opening, the, the, uh, the yeah. opening theme song, they never just cut mm. anime fr- um, uh, video or uh, animation from the, the TV cartoon and put it on the big screen yeah. and, and put it on the film. Yeah. They did go in and reanimate like pretty much everything, but, um, there are some things where they had to have gone back to the manga mm-hmm. in some cases. Like, here's an interesting little tidbit. Yeah. Oolong's RV has a giant number on it. Okay. Is a number eight. Do you know why there's a giant number eight on the RV? No idea. Because in the original manga, mm. that RV was only seen on the title page of that chapter. Mm. And that was it marking that it was chapter eight. Mm. And so it wasn't technically quote unquote in universe an eight on there. It was more like a, Oh, this is like a nice little artistic thing that Akira Toriyama is doing. And they went and replicated the eights on, onto the thing in the show. Cause it's like, it's weirdly, it's like obvious, yeah, that that eight is there for no apparent reason in this movie, other than they just replicated the RV from the original uh, manga exactly the way it was drawn. <laughs> so the what, like watching that scene where you know U- Oolong, 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 yeah, the pig. Yeah, his name is is a is a uh, is a is as a pun on t- on a type of tea. Okay, so Oolong, Oolong tea, Oolong, Oolong the pig, Oolong. Yes. Uh, All, a lot of the names at this point were based on food. Mm, yes. Except for Bulma. Yeah. Her name so, is a p- pun on underwear. Oh, of course. Of course. I'll get that by the dislikes. But when, when I saw that band, I was like, okay, it's April of Van- April O'Neill's band. Where is she? Because <laughs> she's from Channel 8. <laughs> Close. <laughs> uh, Channel 9, actually. Was, was I, I know. I mean, it's, it's not April O'Neill's band is what I'm saying. Yeah. But it just reminded me of that. Also, a lot of the vehicles, mm-hmm. uh, there was actually a lot of bits and pieces of artwork that you'll see uh, Bulma ride that technically she never wrote in the in the manga. OK, but they were used as like chapter uh, uh, art pieces at the beginning of chapters sometimes or the covers of the yeah. uh, collections. Mm-hmm. And that's where they pulled a lot of some of that too. little things that they didn't have to add. But of course, they were having to pull from everywhere for art because they had. Granted, they had two years of manga to base this on, but yeah, there's only a short amount of time where the characters were wearing these outfits. Yeah, because by the t- once you get to uh, the next arc mm-hmm. in the story, the wh- the one where Goku is training with Roshi in the f- mm-hmm. first World Martial Arts Tournament, that's where we start seeing the costumes we're used to these characters wearing with yeah. Goku and Yamcha with the orange mm-hmm. gi that they wear throughout the rest of the franchise. Yeah. Uh, Oolong, I think, is around that time, goes to his wife, Peter, yeah. and stays in that for the rest of the franchise, yeah. and, and different things like that. Okay. So enough. they had little to pull from in terms of character designs, yeah. and, and they used as much as they could. They pulled from everywhere they could at this point where the art was more comedic mm-hmm. in uh, drawing and not, and a lot less, you know, full action-y. 
yeah. Anyway. All right. So my third and final dislike about this film was surprising Yansha. <laughs> I, I was uh, there again, had never seen this film. I intentionally did yes, not tell I, I was, you I about Yansha. So, I was so in the dark about this film. So be like, and since you had never watched the original show, you no. never knew he was like the first real villain. Yeah. He's technically the second villain because Oolong was the first quote unquote villain that uh, okay. turned to friend to the side of friends yeah a, a fellow z warriors despite the fact oolong never fought after this arc ever again <laughs> but yeah yamcha was the first of the z warriors after goku yeah interesting the weakest one <laughs> my gosh so speaking of the the weakest the weakest fighter the bunch but and who who who, who gets parodied all like so right. stinking time in a bridge is hilarious because by the time you get to Z, he is a joke. Yeah, I agree. He's a very strong character, but even Krillin has surpassed him because Krillin's fighting with Goku all the time. Yeah. Every other fighter is stronger than Krillin in the in Krillin, stronger than Yamcha. Yeah. In the franchise. Yeah. So so yeah, he gets beat on a lot. Yeah. So going into that, be like you you have you meet Yamcha as a villain. Who just wants to take these guys out and he beats the crap out of Goku. Yeah, they're an like, even what match. What the world is this? <laughs> they're an even match at the in this at the beginning. That's yes. the same in uh, the show in the in the in the manga and the yes. anime. They're an even match, and Goku barely can keep up with them. Yeah. Uh, that was that was the biggest surprise. I mean, like, thank you for not spoiling that for me. It was just so I was tickled. I was like, oh my gosh, can we get this somewhere else? Besides this no. one film. <laughs> no, because like, Yancha should be able to get a win out of something instead of becoming this prolonged joke he, about everything. He does get a focus episode in Super where he actually does win. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. Which is immediately pulled out from under him. Poor Yancha. <laughs> but hey, hey, at least at least he got, you know, some you know, uh, a a, a, I don't, day, a day in the sun. I don't with this with this movie or in the, the yeah. television series, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed this pleasant surprise of Yansha beating the crap out of Goku. I was like, yes, someone did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was pleasantly surprised. I would watch that every single day. Someone's got to, I will say Goku I, is not invincible. <laughs> Technically, Goku has lost more times than people remember. Yeah, it's true. If we're being honest, it's true. It's just it was funny. He's got reasons. Beat by Yamcha. Now, I will say that that episode of Super where Yamcha actually does win. Like I said, the rug gets pulled out from under him in the last couple minutes, which is a, a bit annoying. Yeah, it's because of the joke. Because this is a it is a baseball episode. You know, he went on to play baseball mm. at the beginning of Z. Okay, and apparently that's how he's that, been making. That's how he made his makes his money all yeah. the way through. Z when you know he's not you know <laughs> trying not to get killed <laughs> or being dead yeah. <laughs> but uh he is he uh is going up against he's on the pitcher's mound and he does his wolf fang and, and pitches the baseball with his wolf fang fist and s unfortunately who he was pitching the ball to was able to actually hit it and it came back and hit him Oh, and he landed on the pitcher's mound in the exact same pose with the oh. ball in the same spot as the Cyberman hand oh, as no. <laughs> when the sweat, when he got blown up in the crater. Oh, it's just he's on the mound instead of in a crater, but it looks like it's like they he looks like they went back and traced it. So it's like Poor I gotcha. get the joke. It's funny, but he won one. Let him win one. He's the biggest joke in the series, but he's also one of the nicer characters in this. Yeah, agreed. Series. Agreed. He's one of the. He is one of the turtle hermits. Uh, he's of the turtle school. Why does he get his butt whooped <laughs> so much? Sorry. Anyway, I just I'd be like. He is stronger I, than Roshi by that point. So ah okay, because Roshi plateaued. Hmm. I enjoyed this tremendously that watching Yancha beat Goku mm -hmm. and the, the guy actually wins like, yeah, he runs away quite a bit in this, this movie. And I, 
No, this is just how his character was at the time. Exactly. He was a bandit. He was trying to get away with uh, mm-hmm. be, be, he was trying to be smart about fighting Goku yeah. since he knew he they was on par yeah. with Goku at that time and that Goku could easily overpower him in the right circumstances. Yes. So he was trying to be strategic about it. Yes. He does that a lot more in the manga than he did in the movie, is yeah. what I'm saying. So, so yes, I enjoyed that Yancha was like he was like he was a powerful character. He beat Goku in mm-hmm. one scene, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And yes, I was pleasantly surprised by Yancha's appearance in this movie. Yeah, because after this, uh, when Yamcha shows up, he actually or he actually, especially during the last bit of the peel off arc, he actually he and Bulma kind of act as kind of like the older siblings to Goku in a, oh. lot, of, in a lot of ways. Oh, okay. In terms of types of characters. Yeah. Anyway, my third like for this film. Okay. I love this theme song. I, I know that's weird. I, this is, I'm primarily thinking of the English theme because I don't think that despite the fact it's, the Japanese theme is the same melody, but it's got different lyrics. I don't think it hits as well. But this theme song to this is just kind of so much fun to kind of sing along to. Okay. Uh, I was happy that we actually got the full thing here with the original animation. It's like, oh, man, if I'd have got to see that on a theater screen, I would have been happy. Mm. But because this is actually good animation for an opening. Yeah. For a TV opening yeah, from this era. So. Uh, even though it like spoils like half of it and most of what happens in that opening is not in this movie. Like uh, the fact, uh, like the giant monkey that Goku turns into that's in the opening. Cause that's Goku in, when destroying the castle yeah. in the opening uh, as the monkey. Um, and so it was nice to see that. And it's like, just, just to see this nice little, uh, not really upscaled, but, Obviously, this would have been while well, the the original manga anime that we got over here was like transferred off sixteen millimeter film. Mm-hmm. You can tell this is from thirty five, and it, and even yeah. though it's the same animation, it looks good. Yeah, it looks it looked great to watch, and I like how the the, the transition of the uh, the Dragon Ball logo uh, into you know the actual bum 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 ba dum bum dum bum bum, and it's right into the animation, and you can't even see the cut. Mm-hmm. Even though there's no way they match that red exactly, but anyway, yeah, I love the I, I love the op- the way they use the opening of the anime in this film. Okay, At the ending could have been better because wherever they pulled wherever Funimation pulled that audio from had not been a good copy of that ending yeah. theme song. But anyway, so um, dislikes. I want to start off with my dislike, if that's okay. My first dislike for this film is the fact that so many of the jokes and plot points of this film, they're not just reused from the original um, anime and manga. They are picked up wholesale, almost where they could have just cut the audio from the original anime and put it here and you probably couldn't have told a difference. Yes. I recognize that this show is, this movie was primarily meant as a sales for probably the original Japanese VHSs mm-hmm. for those who had missed like the TV show was there and, and as an advertisement for the TV show. I understand that's what the original, the entire point of this film was, but in my mind, if you are going to a, Make a film that is separate continuity and separate storyline from what you're doing in the TV show. Mm -hmm. Animate some original stuff. Yeah. I understand using characters from this stuff, but do some original animation. Yeah. Reintroduce Oolong in a similar way, but have him transform into different things than the same things Akira Toriyama had him transform into in the manga and in the anime. Trans uh, have a d- don't rehash the entire thing of Oolong and Poir going to the same shape shifting school, and why Oolong got thrown out. Granted, they did a little bit of this with Roshi, okay, because uh, Roshi is only in this movie for like what five ten yeah. minutes mm-hmm. at most. Yeah, uh, he, in the his in his entire section here is cut up from both of his appearances 
in the original anime Mm because he's got a large split in there from when they first find uh, meet Roshi like in like episode three Mm -hmm. to when he shows up with uh, Chi Chi and Ox King and like episode eight or nine. Okay. There's a, fairly large gap in there so they pull from both of his their his appearances so they did a little bit of creativity and mm-hmm. they had to and everything with the first kamehameha was original because they didn't you know the the kamehameha in this they, they shot us he shot a submarine yeah in the manga he sh- and in the anime he was trying to blast it above ox king's castle so the wind would suck the fire away that was continually burning it and he missed Ah. and hit the castle. Oops. Because <laughs> that's where the Dragon Ball was. That's why Goku went. And of course, Ox King is Chi-Chi's dad. Mm-hmm. So that's where that plot point comes in. But of course, Chi-Chi's not in this film. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I wish they had just done a little bit better job. Uh, if if, they're, if you're going to be doing an original story, go crazy. Don't I get that you're adapting the story and maybe you can still adapt the story, but don't pull the stuff like verbatim. Mm. Don't do the actions exactly the same way. And redo, if you do basically the same general outline of this movie. Mm-hmm. Cause I think the outline is, is a pretty decent, yeah, pretty decent film here. Yeah. And admittedly, you probably don't notice this cause you didn't watch the original exactly. anime. I'm noticing it because, it. right. I, I saw I'm saying, don't introduce the characters. As if no one knows them, because yeah, you really should be if you're gonna, you should be introducing these characters as if audience has no idea who these people are. Yeah. But for those of us who did watch the original show Mm -hmm. and are watching this film, change it up, mix it up, do something slightly different so that it is actually feels more like an original story. Yeah. Instead of badly re not not badly but very cheaply rehashing half of the plot okay granted you're doing basically akira Toriyama has basically lifted wholesale half of the that first story arc from journey to the west Mm -hmm. so i mean yeah i get it but he actually wrote like original stuff around all these plot points Mm -hmm. this movie kind of just took the plot points from the anime and set them down and rearranged them it's like lego sets in a different in a kind of a weird order it looks all the same yeah but it's Different enough that it feels weird. Okay. And that's my first dislike. Geek Devotions, we'll talk about Dragon Ball Evolution later. In fact, if y'all ever do that on the bottom shelf, call me. <laughs> so what's your first dislike? My, my first is like it's like granted, I understand it's the 80s. This was animation back then. They can mm-hmm. get away with a lot of crap. But it's just more like Master Roshi is such a yeah. This is a character point that yes. is in the manga. Yes, I it, it it is at its worst at this point. Okay, between the uh th- this movie and the anime and the manga, this whole story arc is where it's at its worst. Yes, because Akira Toriyama assumed that his one year of working on this arc was all he was ever going to make. Yeah. And then he'd go on to another project. So he was having fun. Yeah. He was doing his whole comedy thing from when he did Dr. Slump, his previous work. Yes. And this was his way of doing that here with having the dirty old man make dirty old man jokes. Yeah. But I agree with you. <laughs> yes. I feel like it is. I mean, like it's understandable. Like, yeah, he you, gets you, what I'm saying is Roshi gets not necessarily less perverted, but he gets less chances to act. Yes. After this arc. Yes. A couple little more in the next one, but that's just because, well, Akira Toriyama gave a weapon against that in that next arc. We'll just say that. Okay. All right. A character that never made it to Z, but really, that's a sad thing. Okay. All right. So, yeah, it's just Master Roshi as a character. He's very perverted. And uh, it was the fact to be like he's always asking Bulma to do some, like, some, you something know, disgusting. Yeah, disgusting or something like that. And obviously, they make a joke out of it. We're like, oh, Oolong? Oolong. Oolong, thank you. Oolong is disguised herself as Bulma. But like it's a funny scene, but at the same time, be like, Bulma's a teenage girl. So can what I, in the world are you can, thinking? Can I make you yes. annoyed? Okay, yes. At that point, when 
she gets oolong to transform into her in yes. the anime and in the manga yes she is wearing a playboy bunny outfit okay fair because uh in the trying to catch oolong originally uh or sometime right after that her last pair of clothes got destroyed or wet or some reason she couldn't wear them and the only pair of women's clothes that oolong had in her size was a a playboy bunny girl outfit okay that's not helping (laughs) no it's not i admit and she wears that pretty much until they get to peel off okay which is real funny in that episode with uh, the the moth the rabbit mafia i got you I, i am just i am not there again there i'm 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 not i'm I'm sorry i jumped on you again i'm sorry go ahead i'm not i'm not trying i'm not trying to say uh i don't even know what i'm trying to say now go (laughs) i can't talk no you're good i can't think of what i was gonna say (laughs) like it's just it's not good yeah i agree it's not good it's not good it's funny for the time period it's not be like not not trying to be culturally sensitive here i'm not yeah but it's just more like when, when you're dealing with and again, it's supposed to be a funny gag. I get it. Yeah. But it doesn't involve Boma herself. And it's it annoying. Her clone. And it's just, you know, it's, 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 an, yeah, it, it's done. It, it's done a very poor taste, but funny. But at the same time, it's just like, it's very cringy to me. And it's I agree. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Just there's like, actually, there's actually a worse moment with Roshi and her. her. Oh, yeah. Like Some I said, slap, I, slap, I have, slap. I have no defense for Akira Toriyama with this. He was just. This is the kind of stuff that was considered like kids material in Japan. They made these yeah. jokes all the time at the time. Yeah. This was not fair. culturally. It, it was, this was fair game. Fair. Understand. And Akira Toriyama took advantage of that for yeah. as long as he could. Granted, they could not show these episodes or this movie. They two kids today. Yeah. Cause even Japan's gotten a little more uh, conservative okay. with their, uh, with, with, with this stuff uh, since then. Yeah. In fact, in some ways they're actually worse than America is mm-hmm. on some of this. But that's why with Kai they actually had to do some editing around like different points. Mm. But either way. Yeah. My is my on the second dislike? Your second dislike. Yeah. My second dislike is pretty much what you just brought up. Okay. Good. <sighs> Look, I get culturally why they he did it. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. And it's not because I'm a prude. No. It's not that I don't find. Okay. I don't find any of the stuff, any, any of the jokes where Bulma or her clone get exposed funny. Yeah. I don't find any of those funny. Yeah. The, some of the stuff that's kind of dirtyish that leads up to that. Actually, some of that is funny. It's not clean, but I mean, it's, it's, it's doable. It's not cross that line, but and this is just how Kira Toriyama was in a lot of his early work. And cause it was allowed. No one yeah. said anything. Yeah. It was not it a was problem. Periods understand. Right. But looking back on it, I don't like it. Okay. And I actually wish I could have thought to give you that warning. I think I gave you a warning you did. about it you when did. I, when I brought the movie over to you, but I yep. wish I was able to explain how really bad it was without spoiling anything. It's all good. Cause it's I still wanted good. this to be a fresh movie for you. Yes. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. So, what's your second dislike? My second dislike. Uh, I'm going off. I'm on. I'm going off the seat of my pants with this one because I didn't write one down. <laughs> um, it's too short of a film. Be like, I, I understand. Be like, where these yeah. are, these are short films, and uh, they're they're not to be you know as like deep in depth kind of films. Be mm-hmm. like the the villain is like okay, he he wants these rubies, and like he he's the evil. Ha ha. He's a bad guy. But there's like, and he gets turned into a slug or whatever because monster, monster basically, it's a generic a mon- monster, generic monster, and like a lot of the story itself really, I mean, like, it's like okay, once we get into the villain and like his motivations and blah blah blah, he wants to be immor- immortal, right? It's- no, he's wanting to uh, wish his curse away. That's right, he's wish his curse away because it's actually right. not a bad wish for no, him. It's not. It's not a really bad wish. But there's a lot of this, like the 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 story itself is kind of just muddled. 
muddled in a lot of yeah. ways in the, like towards the like the third act of this film it's a very muddled but so you have a lot a lot of great story building yeah. going up forward into the third act and the third act is just kind of muddled so uh, kind of muddled. I will say that third act is uh, the one where it deviates the most from the manga mm-hmm. because you're you going on and using whole different characters. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you don't even get uh, anything that mimics giant monkey Goku at, at, at the end of the film, which yeah. honestly, I kind of understand at the same time, slightly disappointment. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. This is probably going to be my third dislike. Is the film is too crammed into an hour? Yeah, agreed. The film really needs about another half hour to really hash out a lot of its plot points. Mm -hmm. We did this is cramming like an entire arc's worth of story into an hour Mm -hmm. of a film. I'm surprised it's as clean as it is. Yeah, but it really does feel like it was rushed into this thing and it and it feels like they I mean, granted they probably only had i'm guessing six months to work on this total Maybe. so because because uh the anime had only been going on a year at this point yeah so yeah i i wish it could have been they could have stretched this out actually made it a full like movie movie if that makes sense yep. this really feels like it was a tv special in a lot of ways. Fair. I just, I just wish there was, if with introducing these original characters and still doing the parts of the plot line from the anime, I wish they could have just made it move together more organically and let not feel as rushed. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So yeah, that's my third dislike. My, you have one. I do have a third dislike. Okay. Now grant knowing I've, you know, I had watched dragon ball Z Granted, I was in football, so mm-hmm. every time we had a break, it was like, okay, guys, you've got, you know, 30, 45 minutes before you go on the field. So eventually someone would bring a VHS, you know, back in the day before DVD, or even a DVD of the latest episode of Dragon Ball Z up from Toonami. So you'd watch that. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is really cool. So that's the way I watched Dragon Ball Z for a long time. So it'd be like watching, I think, in the Kai form, I believe, they they mention that or leave it in this movie. They mention that uh, uh, Goku's father Gohan, Grandpa, Gro- Grandpa Gohan, Grandpa Gohan is killed, and I'm like, oh crap! I'm yeah. like, oh man, be like, you got yeah. stopped by a monkey. <laughs> they they introduced the fact that Grandpa Gohan got killed, yeah. and did absolutely nothing. To Who explain how that happened. And that's a major plot point of the first story yes, arc. I agree. I agree. It's a major plot point. And it's like with the with hindsight of watching it, watching you know Dragon Ball Z and understanding what happened to Grandpa Gohan. It's like, poor Grandpa Gohan. He got yeah. stumped by his own adopted son in a monkey farm. His grandson, but yes. Grandson. He he went with grandson. Oh okay. there's that much age. There is that much age difference. Oh, okay. But still, it's just like ah. Mm. And be like, and kind of be like, that's my third dislike. But I want to throw a little bonus in there. It's like, okay, I did not realize where the Nimbus Cloud came from. Yeah, and the, the, I will say that's one of the things they lifted wholesale from the uh, manga and anime that actually worked. Okay, it worked very, better there, I think, than uh, than some of the others. And of course, Master Roshi couldn't hop on it because he's not pure of heart. Yes, I, I was like, oh, that's funny. But unfortunately, unlike because uh, they're already at the thing where they're going to do the big Kamehameha wave. Yeah. We don't get to see how, how Roshi replaces the Nimbus now that he can no longer write it. Hmm. With mini Gamera. Mini. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah. He actually prefers Gamera to Godzilla. Uh, Kira Toriyama does. And so made mini Gamera. And technically he's allowed to use mini Gamera, despite the fact it should probably be illegal. <laughs> well, good to know. He's actually writing him in, on like the loading screen of one of the Dragon Ball Z Budokai games. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, uh, rating this thing, rating this thing. I'm giving it a seven. Give it a seven. Okay, it's a good, but I have to dock at points for unoriginality in uh, a lot of the storytelling mm-hmm. and. Uh, just some of the things from that time period that I would dock even the original show for. Yeah. Uh, it's just, 
some some elements of those either didn't age well or mm. probably was a bad decision to put it there in the first place. But yeah. you know, I wasn't I was barely alive at this point, so they, I was not the one this was actually Damn. aimed at till much later. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, seven. Okay, it's a yeah. it's a good film. It's just not you know hitting anything out of the ballpark. I got you. Yeah, seven for me as well. Uh, it's a it's a good fun little adventure. Uh, it's nothing that you have to, uh, you know, grab your Dragon Balls, uh, a you know, dictionary. It's probably about that big, you know, the size of a, like a like a family Bible or something like that. And, Thankfully, uh, no. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like how much lore there is in Dragon Ball now? It's like yeah, that'd be you know. Actually, there's not that much, but okay. Continuing. Anyways, uh, so I enjoyed it. I mean, like yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that's been I mean, like they pro- they wouldn't do now, uh, but. I I I appreciate what they did with the film itself, with actually you know going with like with this dub is going in and using the jokes they did back in 1986, and uh, you know using original you know material and the whole bit. I, I appreciate that. Uh, the story kind of it, the story itself drags. They like if, like Drew said earlier, if they would attack another 30 minutes on this film to give it more you know, flesh the story out a little bit more, it would have been much better i'll probably give it a better rating mm-hmm. but overall just a seven it's a fun little film if you haven't seen dragon ball be like this is probably a good little start you know a little start into dragon ball itself now grant if you've watched dragon ball z and all of the other stuff uh this would be it's it's a nice little like oh okay this is where goku starts this is where bomo starts this is where uh uh yamcha yamcha be like Yancha, oh my gosh, I love Yancha in this film. Even though be like he's just he's scared of women and like he's just a, a thief and he actually beats Goku, which was actually yeah. just like yes, barely, barely, but still he beats him. <laughs> but I, yeah. I mean, really, it comes more to a draw because um because Boma walked out. Fair, but anyway, yeah. Anyway, I'm giving it a seven. So next week. Is another Cellcast Plus episode. Yes. Uh, we That's are going to be reviewing Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. We may have a guest coming on. I have not gotten confirmation from him okay. yet, but uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll be reviewing that next week. Uh, it is not a movie for kids. Hmm. I it's, watched it. It's a first, classic film. It's a classic one. I watched it originally, I think, in junior high. Hmm. And I think I might have been a little too young even at that age. Okay. So I'm looking forward to it. I haven't seen the film. Be like, there again, I've seen clips from it because obviously it's a classic film. It has, be like, it has shaped the the movie industry for what it is. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch this. When was this movie made? 1950? 60 something. 60 something. Okay. So yeah, looking forward to that. on as true types i'm checking something ah okay so join us on the other side of the break and we're going to talk about what we've been watching Mm -hmm. uh news assuming we have any yes and then we're going to be talking about some x-men sneak Oh, uh, I just got confirmation from Geek Devotions. We do have a guest next week. Dallas is joining us, so join us for that. Anyway, I almost played the wrong thing. This podcast is a proud member of Culture Box. Whether you enjoy geeky reviews, comedy, or original fiction, you can open up the Culture Box and find something excellent for your soul. Point your web browser to culturebox.media. This week, we suggest checking out Sunning and Brave, where each week hosts Chris Cowan of the Babylon Bee and Nate Henderson of some boring budgeting job confess their privilege, spotlight stunning social media posts, and fabricate outrage, all while keeping you super woke and enlightened. They will make you laugh. That's right. You have no choice. Check out Stunning and Brave at stunningandbrave.net. The Cellcast would like to thank the following patrons. Ashley and Francisco Ruiz, Book of Gaming, 
paulj.powers.com. And I gotta take this name off, so don't Get listen to it. On the show plus uncut episodes, early access to the Cellcast plus reviews and special art from Jacob. Please donate to us on Patreon. I'm working on it. So, Jacob, I have a question for you, my friend. What have you been watching? What have I been watching? Well, it's kind of related to this the movie we just reviewed, which would be Dragon Ball Z Abridged on YouTube. Ah. So, I mean, like, I, which part of Dragon Ball Z Abridged? I am at the very beginning of the Cell games. <laughs> very, very beginning. Okay. So, uh, I. I don't think if you're if you're going through the playlist, mm-hmm. I don't think they included these, which is a sh- crying shame. Okay, but on Team Four Stars thing, there mm-hmm. is a uh, set of verses that take place like uh, as if these were contestants in the Cell Games. Okay, and it's characters from different things. Okay, you really should watch all of them. Oh, okay, I gotcha, gotcha. So uh, I think I I stepped up. I. Uh, I think in the last week I have went through, uh, uh, let me think, the the beginning of the Android Saga. Mm-hmm. Uh, go through the Android Saga, which is absolutely hysterical, uh, and then you get into the, the 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 cell arc of him becoming Perfect Cell. Yes, and then you're be like just getting into uh, the Cell games. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, really? It's like Hercule or Mr. Satan, whatever his stupid name is, like comes in there. It's just Mark. Like, or did you miss that at the end of season two? Mark? Mark. I didn't. <laughs> at the end of season two, while Vegeta's back in space, mm-hmm. he gets a call from uh, an old friend of his. Oh, yeah. That got wished back with the Dragon Ball. Yes, I remember. Yes. And he's oh, now a yes, big Hollywood right. producer now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So he's, 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 and he's and he's uh, and, 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 and uh, he he's representing this new uh, act called uh, Mister Mark Satan. Mark Satan. But I don't like the name. We're probably going to change it to something like Hercule. <laughs> that's right. I, I completely for you're like of course we like you know he he turns up as a ghost haunts uh, Vegeta. <laughs> Except is he really a ghost or is that just uh, weird? Uh, psychological trauma that free Vegeta is going through at the death of his father figure, his father figure. <laughs> but either way, I mean, like, they do do the whole, uh, joke from, uh, uh, fight club where, uh, Vegeta, why do you look so bad? I, uh, uh, he doesn't want to admit he lost to, to the Ginyu force. Uh, you fell down some stairs. I fell down some stairs. No, you didn't shut up or I'll throw you down a flight. <laughs> that. But yeah, like absolutely. Team Four Star nailed it out of the pocket. It just blew this thing out of the out of the freaking stadium with this for what they did with dra- with Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I wish they would have continued, but obviously they couldn't there, because there are reasons, and I'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, there, there are reasons. Uh, very good reasons. Yeah, very good reasons. And plus, they were getting you know strikes and all that. And uh, they, actually, they were long past the strikes. Oh, okay. They only had strikes when they were starting season two. Really. I'll explain all that later. Oh, okay. But yeah, that's, that is primarily what I've been watching is Dragon Ball Z a bridge and absolutely hysterical. I, I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised at a, at a certain scene during the very end of the Android uh, arc to the cell arc. I was like, because they were ramping this whole mm-hmm. thing up and I was like, okay, this is a little weird. This is very disgusting, but I was like, okay, I'm, I'm enjoying where they're going with it, but they, they don't go there. It's like, they just, they, they tease that up, but they don't go there, which I appreciate, but they're going to, I'm not going to say which one it is for the, the Dragon Ball fans out there who know what I'm talking about. Is it about the time machine? No, it's about another Android and his love of Are, birds. No, the other Android. I'm not quoting any of my jokes for that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But thoroughly enjoying the, the two with the hatred of country music. Yes, <laughs> yes. And this this whole thing about country music throughout that entire thing. It's like, what the heck? They're actually setting up jokes for the history of trunks, I which takes that place one. in the future. I saw that one. That came out like 
sometime after a lot of those episodes with the crossover to sell. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were actually setting up lots of jokes. In fact, one of the weirdest things about uh, that is the fact of how much they had to edit Yamcha out of history of Trunks Abridged. Really? Yeah. Because Yamcha's in a lot of those opening shots, but according to Trunks, he can't be there. Huh. After he found out who Bulma's kid was. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Not getting into that. No. If, if you feel the need to commit suicide, call the suicide hotline. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. no. It's a Go dark. Somebody, please. Yes. Somebody. But anyway, that, that, is, that is what I've been watching. What have you been watching? I don't know if I mentioned last week that I had gotten to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. No, you didn't mention that. I did not mention all. that. <laughs> so I'm that kidding. was that was actually two weeks ago. Oh wow, hold on to me, bro. That's How what, was that? That's what threw me because I got to th- I was editing Fire and Ice. Not Fire and Ice. I was editing Megamind today, and I got to thinking, I didn't mention what that I went to see a movie. Right? So yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is actually really good. Okay. Uh, you, If you're going to watch it, of course, you should at least watch Guardians 1, 2, and Avengers Endgame mm-hmm. and Infinity War. So four films. You don't need to watch Thor uh, Blood and Honey. That's not the name of it. Blood <laughs> <laughs> That's the new title. Blood Love, and and honey. Love and Thunder. Love That's and the thunder. actual name. Which is I'm sorry. I mixed it with that with that knockoff Winnie the Pooh mm-hmm. film, horror film. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's almost a compliment to that film. <laughs> anyway. I actually, I don't know if you said it's a compliment to Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, or to Thor, no Love and Thunder. <laughs> Love and Thunder was such a mess. You all because all love and thunder explains is why thor is no longer with the guardians at the beginning of mm-hmm. guardians 3 right oh yeah and you should watch the guardians of the galaxy holiday special that's what i keep hearing <laughs> because it does add a couple of nice little new plot elements that the movie didn't have time to go into ah gotcha. just throwing that out. but it's actually very good it's yeah. i'm going to warn you if you love animals and you love like uh, if you get a little, if you're a little sensitive to blatant murder, hmm. especially after you've grown to love like a group of characters, okay, you will need a box of tissues. Okay, fair enough. Because there is a moment about, I'd say about halfway through this film, that cements why we do not like the villain. Okay. And I wanted to, I wanted to jump in there and strangle the dude myself after that because mm. friendship is a beautiful thing. That's all I'm going to say. And it's good to have friends. You're not helping. <laughs> it's good to have friends. I, I agree, but yeesh. I'm quoting from the movie. It's yes, good to okay, have friends. Okay. But but like you're you're setting my my you're to, setting everything off my head. Be like, please don't do this. <laughs> But you know, no, no, it is a good, it is a good okay, film. Good. I'm giving you this warning because it actually was not something I was expecting ah. from this, and you do need to be aware. If I, this is not like a, is it Marley and Me? Is that the one? Yeah. Where the yeah, it's not like that per se. It's not that bad because I mean, it's not the end of the film after you've mm-hmm. grown to love the dog. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still gonna hit you like a Mack truck. I got you. And it's like. So just bear warning. <sighs> Going to kill you, I evolutionary. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to throw theories out there because then you'll just start. We're not going to go there. Actually, I, the only other thing I'm going to say is if you enjoyed the uh, the 70s music from the first movie and the 80s music from the second movie, the fact that they do 90s music here. And they didn't pick a lot of the 90s songs. I, know. I that, that was actually my other, mainly disappointment is, while well, I have nostalgia for 70s and 80s, the 80s songs mm-hmm. we saw heard in the first two Guardians films, this one pulling from the 90s, I had absolutely no nostalgia for. The only song I recognized was uh, a Beastie Boys song about No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only song I recognized. Okay. Well, outside of a song they play at the very end, which is a callback to the first movie. Okay. But. The rest, unfortunately, I don't think they did as good a job picking songs, but that's also on me for not having any nostalgia for 90s rock and pop. Fair enough. 
and they didn't play any country, which is weird because the country was big in the 90s and i, I think it was even on pop stuff it was not even we didn't even there wasn't even a shania twain song or something like that in there wow. which would have made sense so any or there was no garth brooks i'll tell you that right now yeah, that would be very hard to do <laughs> well granted yes but there was nothing that even sounded like that style like they yeah. were mimicking that it was okay. like no we're gonna go all rock and rap and stuff that works but i don't but it doesn't really work for me fair fair enough anyway Along with that, I have mostly been not watching anything else. Okay. Because I've been distracted by, by a certain, certain video game. game. <laughs> uh, I have watched, actually watched some Car Ranger because that's reviews coming up quickly. I'm just not sure how quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep an eye out on Power Trip for that because I think they still are having trouble getting the episode before that out. Okay. Either way. Um, there was something else I w I did watch last week. Oh, I remember now. I watched the first episode of uh, a new TV show on Disney Plus. Oh, Muppets Mayhem. Oh, okay. The story of how the band from the Muppet Show recorded their first album hmm. this year. Ah, uh, they somehow, despite the fact, had a record deal from like the eighties, never actually made the record. Okay. And uh, they, the record company, is now forcing them to record a studio record, mm. and it's not going well. Okay. I've only watched the first episode. I need to finish it. Uh, this is actually fairly good. Okay, especially if you like. Uh, well, do you remember uh, Tia and Tamara? Um, yeah, Morley. Yeah, those Disney ch uh, Channel stars. Yeah. They actually are major characters in this. Really? Or the, not the not them, but they, they play they play major characters yeah. in this. So interesting. Yeah. Cool. And that's outside of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, that's pretty much what I've been watching. Okay. I'm cool. playing. Nice. Have you got past the tutorial yet? I am past the tutorial. I am I am at the point now where it's like okay I'm trying to figure out where I should go next, but they intentionally don't tell you where to go next. Ah. You're kind of supposed to go and explore, and I kind of know I should go out. I sh I know where I should be going, in the same way that you know early on in Breath of the Wild that you should be heading towards the the four beasts, the four uh, spirit beasts. I kind of know where the disturbances are that I'm supposed to go be uh, looking at, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I am intentionally not heading there yet because I'm just going out and exploring and searching for stuff and trying to make sure I'm powerful enough that when I do go in there, I'm OP. Got it. That's my goal anyway. Plus, I, this is just a fun game to explore. Gotcha. Like Breath of the Wild, but it's more because you've actually got three map layers to go through. The sky, mm -hmm. the Breath of the Wild map with modifications, and the depths. A giant underdark like cave system hmm. that you have to bring light to. Interesting. Uh, and it's kind of a death trap down there. But anyway, uh, that's pretty much what I've been watching and playing. Awesome. Uh, do we have anything in the news? The Cellcast News with your host, Jacob Heron. Why, thank you, Deedlet, and getting into the news. Uh, this was, like, more interesting. It's it's a little movie that came out of Norway, and uh, it's like, the main voice actor of the character is actually Zachary Levi from the Shazam films and also from Tangled and Tangled, uh, mm -hmm. Tangled the series. So, yeah, you know, my love of Tangled, we've already reviewed uh, Tangled the series, Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, what have you. So, yeah, go give those a listen if you want to. We obviously were to review Tangled. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, he's doing that. Uh, this movie, uh, let me see. It's a Norwegian family film featuring 
a feature called Teddy's Christmas. Uh, obviously, Zachary Levi is signed on to the voice of the stuffed animal. This is a CG pick uh, set in the uh, winter pop, winter holiday or also Christmas for us. Uh, the race in the United States through Caplight Pictures and Blue Fox Entertainment, uh, produced by Fanta, Fanta Films. Uh, the film will head to statewide following its release in the European countries. So G Kids, uh, celebrating its 15th year anniversary, is sl- uh, slates its North American release of Lonely Castle in the Mirror and select theaters nationwide. Uh, for the event showing of January, June 21st. That's my, actually, fun fact, that's when I started my job almost 22 years ago now. Um, and June 22nd uh, only. And so, yeah, that sounded like an interesting film. And so, yeah, that's what I have for, for news, unless you have anything else, Drew. No, I do not. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and jump into X-Men? Mm-hmm. Previously on X-Men. Meet the sulky, overbooky, time a honky superhero. A d- 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 electrically transistored superhero. And exotically erotic and aquatic what? superhero. The Marvel superheroes have arrived. X-Men, X-Men, it's today, it's today, X-Men, X-Men, coming your way. Spider-Man and his amazing friends, Iceman and Firestar. Wolverine and the X Men. Wolverine and Hulk are fierce. Doctor Doom ends up in tears when Iron Man joins the fight. Falcon searches from the sky. Scarlet Witch pulls up bad guys. Thor Sanders has thunders. Mind. Who will save the day? The superhero squad. I didn't realize Scarlet Witch was in that. I didn't either. <laughs> Which means I actually have two X-Men. <laughs> right, two mutant characters in that line. I didn't yes. mean to realize I did that. So I thought all I had was Wolverine. <laughs> anyway, we have finally finishing the uh the Phoenix saga with yes. episode five with part five, Child of Light, mm-hmm. which aired originally on September 9th, 1994. And if I'm not mistaken, this was all one week. When this came out, Jeez. much like another Saban show, yes, with a green villain, yeah, turned hero, some with envy and evil, mm. and Barbara Goodson. Oh, I have such a headache right now. <laughs> this episode was directed by Larry Houston and written by Mark Edward Eden. Uh, in this episode, the X-Men are drawn into a battle against Deken within the confines of the world within the Imkran crystal, where Im- Phoenix makes a last stand. I thought it was Imkron. Imkron, Imkran, whatever. Yeah, nuance. I like to point out that this Phoenix saga ends with a last stand. Oh, dear Lord. Just saying. Guest cast for this episode includes Melissa Sue Anderson as Snowbird, Jeffrey Aries as Corsair, Richard Epcar as Gladiator, and Camilla Scott as Lalandra. Mm. I still can't find who voiced to Ken. Really? I, I maybe I'm just not looking in the right spots. Maybe. But quite frankly, this was not much acting on his part anyway. <laughs> there. <laughs> During the worldwide rescue sequence, we get cameos from War Machine and the arm of Spider-Man. Yeah, just the arm. Just the arm. I'm really curious, since they, his arm cameos in that shot, it being so long since I've seen Spider-Man, if he was... Was this around the time that show would have started? Uh, no. I, 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 I actually have to look that up. 
I haven't looked it up. Like, let's do some research and yeah. figure out if we can tie that I'm, in. I'm curious how that's going to tie in because that's because the Spider-Man animated series is the only other thing uh, until X-Men 97 that's yeah. in this Marvel universe. Yeah. So there's that. Um, yeah. And that's actually the end of my trivia. So, yeah. Unfortunately, we did not get any appearance from the one and only... Do you know how hard it is to find an excuse to play that yes. clip? Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. And I forgot about it. Nearly forgot about it this week. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? It's it's a it's a wonderful send off to the Phoenix Saga. There, it's five episodes. It's a it's a wonderful arc. Mm-hmm. It kind of wraps everything up, and obviously you know where it's going. That you know, the like everybody gets sucked into the Imcron crystal, and they they can't stop him. They can't stop. Uh, how do you pronounce his name? The can, the can, the can. You know, they can't, they can't defeat him. And obviously, because Gene, the Phoenix, yes. is the only one who can do it. And it's be like it is a, it's a wonderful send off to the character. Be like she has to willingly sacrifice herself mm-hmm. into, uh, go into the sun for the can and yes. the Emperor Crystal can't, you know affect anything because obviously we know, you know, so as I was sitting, Phoenix saga shows up later. For as I was sitting here wondering. Where's Galactus when you need him? That would have taken care of a lot of things. That is true. Been another issue for the X-Men to, f- to take care of, but... Yeah, but... Isn't you take care of Jaken. <laughs> that is true. Galactus is already... Oh, no, wait a minute. The, Galactus character. is not showing up in this That's, yet. Right, that's right. I'm thinking of another character. Yeah. This Fantastic I'm, I'm Four is Gladiator. Not, I'm thinking of Gladiator. Gladiator, which is a yeah. Superman knockoff. Yeah, it's a Superman knockoff. <laughs> Punk Superman knockoff. Punk Because he's got a mohawk. Yes. And he's going to serve his empress. He's going to serve his empress. And it's like, it's like oh, I wish Barbara Goodson was was voicing Lalandra. Oh, my gosh. And that uh, <laughs> Goldar was voicing Gladiator. Oh but that Richard Epcard never voiced uh, oh my Gla- uh, Goldar. Yes, my princess. <laughs> I will empress, say, empress. I regret my empress this, this, this on this day. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I reg- this is not a good Goldar. I regret my empress that it was on this day that I, that I enter into your service. <laughs> my stupid brother, you give me such a headache. Clip it. Clip this now. <laughs> But yes, it is absolutely hilarious. Now I got that stuck in my head. Thank you very much. That is hilarious. But I yes, I I enjoyed the mess out of this this uh, five part episode of the Phoenix Saga. Uh, we're we're as as an audience member. Obviously, this came out in 1994, 95? 94. 94. Came out ninety four because it originally came out ninety three. Yeah, yeah. The first show was in ninety three. Yeah, ninety three. This so is 94. this is in the middle of uh, putting this in context. Yes. Power Rangers was in its second season. Yes. So, no, I can't get that out of my head. That's. I'm sorry. I, I'm not no, trying. It's great. I'm it's not great. It's, it's trying great. to mess with you on that. No, no, no. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Like you might want to make that a short. Just maybe make it a short. It's great. But I enjoyed it. It, it. it ends on a very sour note. It's not one of these like, hey, we've learned a valuable lesson. It's like, no, Gene sacrificed himself in order to save the universe. They're like, yeah, this is an end on a very happy, oh shucks, hey, we won the day kind of thing. And it's it's very somber. And you get this moment between um uh Scott's dad. I can't remember the character's name. Corsair, who Corsair. I still say should be voiced by Jonathan Frakes. Yes, agreed. So you have Corsair and be like, be like they're be like, it's like, yeah, Corsair lost his his wife, blah, 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 blah. It's like you realize, okay. Scott, that's your father. I, so I was about mother. to ask, did Corsair ever tell uh, Scott about the fact that he's that they're their father and son. I we think know this for yeah. some. I don't remember how we learned. It's this. in the series. It's in the series. Yeah, it's so outside later. outside of the trivia. I don't remember how we learned this, but it's I know it was known. Yeah, but I'm still going. The Cyclops know? No, not at this point. I mean, no. I don't. I don't even think we ever get to meet Scott's brother in this. Oh, we, I think we meet Havoc. I think. Do we meet Havoc? I don't remember. I don't think we, I, it has. Been, it's, it's been a it's while. Been Thirty years since I watched mm-hmm. this part of the show. Yes. So. So yeah, they'll be like, it's great. It's got this very nice somber, but you know things have done. You know, have been done the right way. 
And uh, I, I love this uh, Jean Grey arc because there again, in season one and two, we really got really nothing of Jean Grey of who she is until like, you know, season three. And she mm-hmm. kind of comes to her own character and she becomes the Phoenix or the host for the Phoenix. Yeah, because you know, she, she does a good the, the, the actress for for uh, Jean does a good job of switching back bef- back and forth between Jean Grey and Phoenix. And Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Agreed. It's like and again, end on a very somber note. Uh, there again, I have not watched this in probably 30 years, so it's going to be a very interesting trip to watch the series going forward. And knowing the Dark Phoenix saga is just around the corner. Yeah, it's like it's later this season. Mm-hmm. Like, actually, it's in like a few weeks. Yeah, it's not actually long from now. No, on our recording. Yes, but yeah, uh, this was a great little little arc of stories. Uh, I, I'm still kind of wondering. It's like Charles, like, what in the world were you thinking? He wasn't thinking. He was like, oh, this psychic beings telling me to do this and help. And it's like, so you send your 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 students into danger you mm-hmm. don't know what's going to happen you're just kind of you know kind of a a, a, a a wink and a prayer that they'll be okay and you don't tell them anything even though you probably know things you're not informing them and so thanks charles we are, and, and and your your whole uh your whole dark your whole dark side that you kept suppressed <laughs> that is that was such a weird chapter was of such this. a weird chapter of it it's like what in the world is going on here but be like it was there again. It's just it's it's interesting I think, telling. I but, think they wanted an excuse to draw Xavier in a cape. Yeah, <laughs> capes are always fun. Minus be like you, you know, end the note. No capes. <laughs> now I want Charles Xavier going. I do not say blah blah blah. <laughs> Anyways, I enjoyed this episode tremendously, and. It's like be like knowing what we know is like oh my gosh the 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 scene that got me the most it was the scene where um, Corsair and Scott be like mm-hmm. obviously Corsair kidnapped Scott <laughs> yeah and it's like it's like yeah be like yeah I be like Scott be like yeah I really never I be like, I really don't remember my parents and it was like yeah I lost my wife be like it's, it's like, like yeah my, but I'm I, really glad I got to know you yeah. You remind me of son. My- Say the word son. <laughs> That's all we're asking. That's all we want. No, we got to hold that off for whenever Corsair shows up again. Yeah. Which have- may not be until X-Men 97 for all I know. No, he shows up. Be like this. this uh, there, plot yeah. yeah they, I, they finish it in this season. I, f- I forget that uh, Dark Phoenix, at least at the very least, Dark Phoenix saga does return to the Shi'ar. And I can yeah. see the Star Jammers getting involved in that because yeah. Jean Grey is on trial, if I remember correctly. Something like that. But anyway, yeah, great episode. Somber note. Maybe but, not. Maybe not in Dark Phoenix. Maybe somewhere later because yeah. they actually do use the Hellfire Club. But I bet they call them something. Call it. Call yeah. them a different. They, they call it the <laughs> Hellfire Club. But uh, I would note that this. Um, there, there are so many little quirky little things here and there throughout this entire arc, which is great. But there again, it's just like, wow, okay. Be like Kate Charles, Charles not telling his students anything. Be like, yeah, it's just like, oh, yeah, you must do this because it's the fate of the world. And like you get great Jean Grey arc. She becomes the Phoenix, whatever. And uh, her great sacrifice, sacrifice moment, wonderful. And it's just, it's great. It's just wonderful, wonderful. And so, yeah great episode that i enjoy and i remember very fondly from mm-hmm. my childhood which i think i was 10 when this came out hmm. 93 95 yeah i was about 10 11 years old i so far i can tell you this about the x-men the phoenix uh of the, of the x-men phoenix sagas i'll include both of them here hmm. far better than anything the movies did mm-hmm. the movies really ruined that story because the only time the Hellfire Club shows up or any of the Hellfire Club shows up in the movies is first class. Is it first class, which has nothing to do with Jean Grey? Yeah. She's in the movie technically. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because I, I kept thinking it was like, yeah, the la- the last stand, not a very good movie. And what I keep hearing of Dark Phoenix, oh, it's not a not good movie. A good mo- I'll put it this way. Last stand is better. That's bad. 
That is how about really the, bad. How about the only thing? Really, if if in my opinion, yeah, it should have stopped with Apocalypse. Oh, agreed. Because Apocalypse was good. Apocalypse was a, was at least an enjoyable film. Yeah. Uh, Dark Phoenix and the New Mutants. Disney should have killed when they bought Fox. Hmm. Because there was, those were the last two X-Men films that Fox was able to produce under the old franchise. Yeah. So, so they, and they only let them out because they were mostly done. In fact, I think New Mutants, which was which came out after, got delayed again because of COVID. Yeah. Thanks, COVID. No, don't thank you, COVID. <laughs> this is one the one time I think COVID should have done more to kill I, that film. <laughs> You know what that kind of reminds me of? Warner Brothers and Batgirl. Now, there was a completed film. Okay, you have a point because I did say with with uh, back then when HBO Max was killing everything mm-hmm. that they should have gone ahead and released it because there's no excuse for a film that completed exactly. to come out. I, I so yeah, you, you are you, yeah. You, that is actually very fair because that is actually me being slightly hypocritical saying that Disney should have killed New Mutants. Yeah, I would agree with you. I will admit that I was hypocritical in that moment. Mm-hmm. Hey, that being said, if you want to review New Mutants on uh, on the Bottom Shelf Podcast, Dallas, hit me up. Because <laughs> I hear that it's not good. <laughs> it's not. Any anyway, Venom was better. Venom was better. Yeah. Okay. Was. Uh, the carnage. Both venoms were better. Okay, then. I don't know if you consider one to be less than the other. Mm. You personally, I'd, yeah. If you've even seen both films, I've seen Venom. Obviously, we we reviewed it for the movie of the week podcast. We did. Yes, we did. We did. <laughs> we did. And I was not. I did not have a good time on that review. Let's say that Carnage ain't much better than that. <laughs> I, if, I actually, enjoyed- actually, uh, about the only thing I liked about uh, Let There Be Carnage was when I was sitting there watching the end, the, the after credits scene, mm-hmm. you and, told me that. and uh, Venom and, and is talking with Eddie about something. And all of a sudden, the room shakes horribly, and he's now in an island cabana. And he's seeing a new story, and we then see MCU Spider-Man's uh, expose mm-hmm. about killing... Um, I nearly said Mystique. That is not that character's no. name. Mysterio. Mysterio. <laughs> I go, It's the same universe now! That wasn't supposed to happen! Like personally, I have not seen uh, the Carnage film, but I'd be like personally, I really didn't enjoy Venom for what it was. Yeah, as a film. it's not a great film. It's I mean, like it's not. I don't know because personally, I'm taking it just perspective as a film, the way it was approached, the way that Tom Hardy did the performance. I thought he did an amazing job as a performance. Oh, yeah, as Tom Hardy part. actually does a good Eddie and and Venom because yeah. he's playing both characters. Yeah, Tom Hardy is a good actor. I was Come actually- at me, Jim. I was actually disappointed that Venom did not get more of a pull in No Way Home. Yeah. Because that would have been cool, but already he already had a lot of crazy stuff happening in No Way Home. Yeah. So, fair. That's yeah. your excuse to get v- Venom into that storyline and it not be whatever amazing spi- whatever, uh, t- the original Spider-Man, uh, to- Tobey Maguire Spider-Man did. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Go right ahead. <laughs> but, yeah, just like, I'd be like, yeah, Venom to me personally was a, I thought it was a good film. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't like the film, but for what it was, what the storytelling they were doing was very good. Look, I don't believe in the turn your brain off sentiment yeah. when you're watching a film because if you're not if you're, you turn your brain off, you're not paying attention. Oh, I agree. In so many ways, I don't think anyone can actually turn their brain off. It's more be aware that you're not eating filet mignon. And that you're eating Whataburger or mm. McDonald's. Right. Or microwaved hamburger or the, something yeah. like that. There again, be like, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that be like you need to know all the lore and the whole bit. Yeah. What I am saying for what the story they were telling, 
the the characters, the carry arcs, and the whole bit, what they were telling mm-hmm. in the story itself, outside of the you know Spider Man's on it, it's not he doesn't have the spider logo, right. what have you. The story itself, I really enjoyed. The characters, I really enjoyed. I love the weird relationship between Venom and Eddie and Tom Hardy's performance right. was really good. I like Tom Hardy's performances. Again, come at me, Jim. Anyways, <laughs> this has been your extra review that none of us expected of Venom and its a st- surrounding media <laughs> uh, that was not intended for tonight. No, so we wasn't. did no research. No research. I, I'm just. I'm just remember. We our, our, we're our, just. We just started conversating there, folks. Yes, I, I just remember very fondly of doing that episode for conversing. Uh, Got um, conversated. Conversating is not a word. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, if, if you want to go hear our review of Venom, go listen to Movie of the Week, Movie podcast. Of the Week podcast. It's still out, so go give it some love. It's like, yeah, I was... I, don't, you know, I might have to go back and listen to that episode because mm-hmm. I don't remember it. I do, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Anyway... <laughs> That brings us to the end of this episode. Yes. Next week on X-Men, the animated series, uh, (laughs) we are going to be watching the episodes No Mutant is an Island and Obsession. And I literally have no idea where we're going (laughs) on these two episodes. Hmm. So join us next week for that with Dallas. Uh, In the meantime, uh, this has been Drew. This is Jacob. And we'll catch you in the next frame. You can follow Jacob on his Facebook at Jacob B. Heron. His Facebook page, Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where he tries to draw each and every day. His Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. His Twitter at Jacob Heron. And his letterbox to Jacob Heron. You can find Drew on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. His Facebook page, Drew's photo bin to see his photography. His letterboxed page at GGeorge759. His Twitter at GGeorge759. And Instagram at Drew Dodgen. You can like us on Facebook at The Cellcast Podcast. On Twitch at The Cellcast Gaming. On YouTube at Cellcast. On Twitter at Cast underscore Cell. The Cellcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or anywhere else fine podcasts are downloaded from. Please rate and review us where you found us, and also on Podchaser. Email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. The Cellcast is a proud member of both the Pop Americana and Culture Box Media Networks. For more information, please see the link in the description. Our theme song is Drop and Roll by Silent Partner. And remember, that's Cell with a single L. Dragon Balls, look out for them all. Come and hunt those Dragon Balls with me. Gotta heed the call of Magic Dragon Balls. What a great adventure this will be. Set a course for action. Adventure does wait. A fantastic journey for your dreams. A thrilling mystery. E-